Okay, it's your girl Nicole, and welcome back to another episode of the Riser's Hub podcast. Happy Monday. How are you? <laughs> I hope you had a really nice weekend, got some rest, spent time with family and friends, got recharged, and now you're ready for a new week. For me, I have to say I'm pretty proud of myself, but I'm also a little frustrated as well. And here's why. I'm proud of myself because I'm getting the rest that I need from all that crazy running I did last weekend and last week. And if you don't know, I ran about 45 miles in seven days. Listen to the last podcast. It's pure craziness, but that's who I am. Um, I also had a laundry list of things to get done. And I had to get them done in one day. Like literally nine things. And guess what? I got through everything on that list, but I forgot one thing. And I didn't even list it on the list. I didn't prep for this podcast. And that's the one thing that I needed to do to get this podcast out to you today. There was no script, no extensive notes, just dribble on pieces of paper here and there. Yeah. And you know the feeling when you're not prepared or you're late with something and you feel like an imposter, right? Well, today I want to talk about authenticity and imposter syndrome. I know that many of us grapple with that from time to time. And this topic is, has been brought up several times in several conversations in the past couple of weeks with um, a few of my other wellness colleagues. And I know I've struggled with it from time to time, but guess what? Through personal experience and research, I've learned how authenticity might just be the key to overcoming imposter syndrome. In this episode, I want you to grab your journals or your phone, or please take mental note if you're driving, because I have questions for you throughout the podcast, and I want you to think about those questions, and I want you to find the answers to those questions for yourself. Here's your first set of questions. (laughs) Number one, ask yourself, what does authenticity mean to you? Number two, have you ever felt like an imposter? even when you're fully capable of doing whatever challenge is placed in front of you? And number three, how might being your authentic self help you shake off those feelings of imposter syndrome? Now, imposter syndrome is that little voice that says, you're not good enough, you don't belong here, or they're going to figure you out, you're fake. Does that sound familiar? But here's the thing. What if you embraced your authenticity? Do you think that could help you silence that voice? Well, let's explore how being your true self can not only enhance your wellness journey, but also help you defeat imposter syndrome once and for all. So let's just get into it. Now, authenticity sounds simple, right? Just be yourself. But in reality, authenticity can be quite complicated, especially when imposter syndrome kicks in. Authenticity is about showing up as your true self, aligning your actions with your values and being real. But here's the catch. Sometimes our environments and the people that are around us challenge our true selves. Many of us struggle with it, especially when we feel like we're not good enough. Imposter syndrome is real. Maybe you're the only woman in a male-dominated space. Or You're a minority in your community. These spaces can make us question who we truly are and if we even belong. So we put on our masks, we adapt to fit in, and we play a role just to survive. But guess what? That's where imposter syndrome thrives, in that gap between who we are and who we think we need to be. But can I share something with you? Truth? You were placed in that space for a reason. Your unique voice, skills, and perspective got you there. The fear of being judged or measuring up to somebody else, it's all in your head. The real power comes from showing up as your authentic self, even when it feels risky. This podcast today feels risky, but I'm going to show up as my authentic self. I'm going to kick imposter syndrome to the side. And I'm going to get through this podcast with you. (laughs) All right. Here are your second set of questions. Think about the environments you navigate. How have they shaped your sense of authenticity? 
And number two, what fears come up when you think about showing up as your true self? Is it fear of judgment, rejection, or not even fitting in? All right, so let's look into imposter syndrome. It shows up when we feel like we're pretending that somehow we've been tricking people into thinking we're more capable than we are. Let me tell you something. It's draining, exhausting, and it can affect your mental and emotional wellness. But here's the secret. The more you lean into your authenticity, the less room there is for imposter syndrome to take hold. And let me share something with you that was shared with me. I know that leaning into your authenticity can be scary. And you're probably listening to this going, Nicole, you don't know where I work. You don't understand where I live. You don't get my family. And I understand that. But maybe those spaces are not for you. Or maybe your authenticity can change the way people see things and see you. In one of my group sessions, a young lady held a very important position in her work environment. She shared with us that she was the only woman of color. She embraced her heritage by the way she dressed, but felt like she didn't belong in that space. So here were the questions that I asked her. In the position that you hold, did you get through the interview process? She said, yes. In the position that you hold, is your educational background in that field? She said, yes, of course. My next question was, when you sit at your desk and you see the work in front of you, can you do it effectively and successfully? She said, absolutely. My last question was, has anyone approached you at work to tell you that you don't know what you're doing? And she said, no, no one's done that. So now that I had all those answers to those questions, this is what I told her. Number one, you are showing others that someone who looks like you can hold that very important space. Number two, you are now an example to others who may or may not look like you, but now believe they can too hold an important space like you have. Number three, Use your authentic self to connect with others. You will learn that we are more the same than we are different. Share who you are when the time permits, and you will open minds to new possibilities. And the first thing she said to me was, oh my goodness, I never thought of it that way. Look, if you break down how you got into the space you're in and how your authenticity played a role in that, start asking yourself, what do I want to accomplish in this role and how can I thrive? If you ask those questions and take the focus off being an imposter, you will thrive. When you embrace who you truly are, quirks, flaws and all, you no longer feel like an imposter because you're not pretending anymore. You're simply being who you are. You're being you. Authenticity becomes your armor. And the more you show up as your true self, the more imposter syndrome will fade away. Think about it. When you're not constantly trying to perform or prove yourself in front of others, you free up so much energy. You're not on edge, waiting for someone to figure you out. You're just living in your truth. And when you live in that truth, you not only feel more at peace, but you also build resilience against those imposter syndrome thoughts. Okay, here's your next set of questions. Number one, how does imposter syndrome show up in your life? In what situations do you feel like you're pretending? Now, I know some of these questions are kind of repetitive, but I really want you to think about it because there are some of you out there who are really having a problem with imposter syndrome and imposter syndrome is real. The next question, how might showing up more authentically help you fight the feeling of imposter syndrome. Let me get real with you for a minute. I've been there. Like yesterday, I've been there. I had an aha moment about three weeks ago. I was having a conversation with another coach, and I think I mentioned this in the previous podcast with Abby Goosh. There was an opportunity that, was, that I was pushing for, and it's an opportunity I've had before, and I was convincing myself that this was the perfect opportunity again. I was capable of taking on this responsibility 
and I thought I was ready. After explaining all this mumbo jumbo, I looked up at my friend and she asked, are you done yet? <laughs> she said, it's not going to work out because you've been there before. And when you've been there before, that particular opportunity has failed you. But this other opportunity is more aligned with who you are and what you want to do. It's what makes you authentic and real. So why are you pushing for something that's not meant for you? And you know what? It hurt. It hurt deep. But when I started to think about what she said, and I started to marinate on it, I would have taken that opportunity or that responsibility, and I would have felt as though I didn't belong there. And she's right. It wouldn't have worked out because I've been there before and I've felt like an imposter and I don't want to feel like that anymore. There were times in my life and career when I felt like a complete fraud, like I didn't belong in certain rooms or conversations. I had all the skills. I could do the work, but I questioned my worth, doubted my skills and constantly felt like I had to prove myself because those were not the spaces that I was supposed to hold. So that's another thing I want you to look at when you're looking at authenticity and being an imposter. Are you supposed to even hold that space? It's not about you not belonging there. You may have the skills. You may have everything you need. But if it doesn't hold true to you and it's not who you are, maybe that's not where you need to be. That's the twist in this particular segment. So the more I leaned into my authentic self, and I was honest with those around me and myself, the more those feelings of imposter syndrome started to lose their power. Was it scary? Absolutely. But the more I embraced who I really was, the less I cared about what others thought or whether I measured up. And I've seen it in others too. The people who fully embrace authenticity, first of all, I try to surround myself with authentic people. Why? They tend to walk through life differently. They're not weighed down by imposter syndrome because they're not trying to be anything other than themselves. And I learned so much from truly authentic people. All right, here are your next set of questions. Number one, think of someone you admire for their authenticity. What can you learn from how they show up in the world? And number two, think of someone famous that you really admire. How authentic are they? I believe that the most famous and successful people in this world show up exactly who they are. They embrace it, and through their knowledge, talent, and skill, they're successful. And you can do the same thing in your space. Now, overcoming imposter syndrome can be very simple, and it can be very complicated. So if you're listening to this and you really do have an issue with imposter syndrome and being your authentic self, I'm going to suggest that you find a neuro coach or a therapist who can help you change the way that you think. Now, I'm only going to touch on self-awareness and its role in overcoming imposter syndrome. Part of being authentic and kicking imposter syndrome in the booty is having self-awareness. Self-awareness is a critical tool in combating imposter syndrome. It helps individuals gain a deeper understanding of their strengths, limitations, and thought patterns. When we develop self-awareness, we can objectively observe our feelings of doubt, insecurity, and fear of being exposed as a fraud. This allows us to challenge these thoughts rather than blindly accept them. By tuning into our internal dialogue, we can distinguish between feelings based on fact and those driven by fear or comparison. Self-awareness helps bridge this gap by reminding us of our past achievements, skills, and growth. Instead of being critical of our mistakes, we can learn to see them as part of a growth process. And I've said this before in other podcasts, when you're going through the process, that growth process, the mistakes and the things that we learn, it will all benefit us. This shift in perspective helps reduce the pressure to be perfect and diminishes the grip of imposter syndrome, fostering a more authentic and confident version of ourselves. This shift in perspective helps reduce the pressure to be 
perfect and diminishes the grip of imposter syndrome. By reflecting on our experiences and emotional triggers, we empower ourselves to break free from the cycles of self-doubt and embrace the value we bring. Now, like I said three weeks ago when I had that aha moment, it really hurt. But let me tell you something. In those three weeks, I couldn't get that comment out of my head that you don't belong in this environment because it's not going to work out. But you do belong in this other environment because it holds true to your values. Now, when I thought about my old environments, I started thinking about all the work that I did. I started thinking about my resume. I started thinking about all the things I did when I worked with all these different groups of people. And at the end of the day, I did really good work. I'm really proud of the work that I put out there. Okay, so another way to conquer imposter syndrome, like I said before, is to go to a therapist or a coach that can help you with this neuro switch. And I'm just going to mention a couple of them according to mentorcruise.com, okay? So there's cognitive restructuring. This process involves questioning the validity of negative self-assessments and replacing them with balanced, realistic perceptions, okay? And that's a little bit of what I talked about with my personal experience. I started thinking about all the things that I was successful at and all the work that I've done, and I'm proud of that work. And I'm proud of the work that I'm doing now moving forward into my truth. So you have to remember the things that you've done and what you've accomplished for you to ignore that imposter syndrome. Being mindful and have emotional regulation. By reducing anxiety and self-doubt through mindfulness exercise to promote emotional regulation, techniques like deep breathing, meditation can cultivate a sense of presence, helping you ground yourself in those present moment, in the present moment. Next, strengthening your self-compassion by being kinder to yourself. How many times have I told you this? Just be kind to yourself and acknowledge your achievements and accept your imperfections. Next, visualization and positive reinforcement can help reshape neural pathways by imagining success and positive outcomes, helping them build confidence and counteract negative thoughts. Now, visualization is a great way to move forward in the most positive way. Close your eyes, visualize yourself doing something successful. And don't stop. That is my problem. I can see it. I can visualize it, but I only do it for a short second because I'm scared. So what I have been practicing on is giving myself the full gamut, seeing myself walk into what's successful to me, how it looks, how it's going to shape, and how it's going to end. You have to have the full visualization. And last, celebrating achievements. This practice shifts the focus from feeling of inadequacy to a sense of accomplishment, okay? Now, the role of community and your environment. It's important to acknowledge that sometimes imposter syndrome is amplified by the spaces that we hold. And we said this earlier in the podcast, we live in a world where individuality is celebrated, but conformity is often rewarded. It can feel like you have to be someone else just to succeed. But when we create environments that value authenticity, we not only free ourselves from imposter syndrome, but we also empower others to do the same. That's exactly what I was sharing with the young lady in the group. You are empowering others to do the same thing that you're doing, holding that space. That ripple effect can transform our communities, our workplaces, and even our relationships. Here is my next set of questions. In your community, how often do you feel pressure to conform? What would it take for you to show up more authentically? And how can you foster an environment where others feel safe to be their authentic selves? So here are my final thoughts and takeaways. Authenticity is a lifelong journey and overcoming imposter syndrome is part of that path. The more we understand about ourselves, our strengths, our fears, and our values, the closer we get to living our life that's in alignment with who we truly are. Imposter syndrome will try to creep up in our lives from time to time. But remember this, you belong wherever you are because you are enough. Authenticity is your superpower. And when you show up fully as yourself, you'll find that 
those imposter feelings have less and less control over your life. So my challenge to you today is to show up, be bold, be real, be authentic. That is the antidote to imposter syndrome. You've got this. Now, as you reflect on today's episode, where do you feel most aligned with your true self? And where do you feel disconnected? What is one step you can take this week to bring more authenticity into your life? All right, that's enough questions for the day. Thank you for tuning in to the Rise Yourself podcast. I hope today's episode sparks something inside of you and encourages you to be your most authentic self. It's never easy, but it's always necessary. So until next time, I'm your girl, Nicole. This is the Rise Yourself podcast. Stay authentic, stay well, and take care. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Remember, this podcast is meant for both education and entertainment purposes only. I am not a licensed therapist, so it's crucial to consult your physician, psychotherapist, or qualified health professionals for personalized advice. Until next time, take care. If you're enjoying this podcast, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share. That's what they told me to do at the end of this podcast. So could you hook me up? Thanks. Bye.